Thank you, Heart Dream. It's good to see you again. You're like part of our family. Even though you moved out of state, we still knew how to find you. So welcome. And welcome everybody to Unity Spiritual Community, whether you're joining us in our stay at home Sunday, which I guess I should check and see who's got their pajamas on or watching via live stream on Facebook. You are also part of this Unity family. And now let's have a moment of prayer as we sanctify this service, as we sanctify this Zoom room, because nothing is beyond God. And we know that we are here with our intent to make it a very holy place, one that blesses all who attend, and one that does the work of God. And we say thank you and amen. Now we're gonna invite our board secretary to share today's daily word. So this is Ashley Forsyth. You're muted, Ashley. Okay. Can you unmute yourself? No? There we go. It was saying that the host needed to do it for me. Okay. Um, good morning. The word for today is understanding. Uh, Sunday, August 20th, 2023. Understanding. With understanding, my spirit is always cool. One of the best ways to remain calm in any agitating circumstance is to practice understanding. Seeking to understand gives me information and insight and eases my reactivity. It keeps my emotional thermostat dialed down if I'm tempted to lose my cool. Perhaps poet Rudyard Kipling was referring to understanding in his poem, If, when he wrote of the importance of keeping your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Properly mastered, my power of understanding gives me the strength and presence of mind to be a beacon in times of trouble or crisis. Whatever this day may bring, I will carry the light of understanding with me. I am cool in spirit. I am understanding. And the scripture today is from Proverbs 17:27. One who is cool in spirit has understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. We'll now bring up the lyrics to our first congregational song and invite Heart Dream to lead us in singing it.
Thank you, Heart Dream. You're both angels in our opinion. And it's time for our Sunday featurette. I want you to look at this slide that says paradigm shift. Because we are continuing a series of Sunday featurettes on what we call paradigm busters. And I'm going to um, take this down now so that you can actually see some people. There, there we are. Now the first talk in this series was based on the technique of the both and, and it was, I think, two weeks ago. And today we're covering two more techniques and we'll wrap the series up probably next week with the fourth technique, which is called, there's a different way of seeing this. And we begin today with the technique called, maybe I don't know. And this is an important tool in identifying erroneous base assumptions. Beliefs that we hold, whether they're big or little, that are wrong. And furthermore, are ones that we've never questioned. That's why they're called assumptions. They could be called invisible beliefs. And I've got a good example on a mundane level. In the 1970s, my mother and I went on a Caribbean cruise. It was the first time we'd traveled out of the country. Norwegian Caribbean line, huge dining room full of international passengers. And I'm sitting at the dining room table and looking around at all the different ways that these people used their knives and forks. Now, I had been raised that when you have a knife and a fork and you, and, you, and you need to cut your meat on your plate, you put your fork in your left hand to hold the meat, put your knife in your right hand to cut it, then you put your knife down, then you grab your fork with your right hand, this is all if you're right-handed, and you eat that piece, and then you put your fork back in your left hand, spear another piece of meat. Do you have any idea how inefficient that is? And I looked around the dining room and there were many different ways of using the utensils, including the very simple change of just leave your fork in your left hand. You cut a little piece of meat, put it in your mouth with your left hand and you're ready to cut your other one. This shocked me. It really did. I had never considered that there was any other way. These things we just take for granted, but they're not. They're optional. And it goes deeper than just your fork, too. What if it's not just about eating utensils, but about beliefs that color your life and cause a degradation in your lifestyle or perhaps even bring you suffering? I had another experience, good old mom, mom died this week, by the way, I guess that's why she's on my mind. She died on Tuesday. Mom and I went to London and we were in line at the Tower of London waiting to, I think that's where the crown jewels are, waiting to get in. And there was a young black man who worked there. He was like an usher and he started flirting with me. And I was shocked and I was shocked that I was shocked because it had never dawned on me 
that this would never happen in the United States, not, not in 1995. And yet, in this other country, this other culture, nothing was thought of it. I had had this belief that that's not the way people acted in public, and it was wrong. It was something that maybe I didn't know how people really could act in different countries. So how do we get in the habit of wondering? Maybe I don't know. We listen to people who don't agree with us. I know it's painful, but you can learn things. We try new things, like we go to other countries and surprise ourselves. And when something is really bothering us, we take time to consciously consider that we might not know. We might not know. It does get easier with practice. When we get used to the idea that most people don't know, and when we have reaped the reward of having a greater awareness from using this, this tool. Paradigms are assumptions by their nature. And learning to recognize them and being willing to question them is integral to spiritual growth. So now we move on to the next one, which is called, what if I did know? This, these are not a pair. These are not like opposing twins. Right, you'll find out as we explain what this one is. What if I did know is a time honored counseling technique used to bypass restrictive patterns that block self-discovery. If you feel stumped when facing a tough question or situation, take time to ask yourself, what if I did know? And you will be surprised at the wealth of information and strategies lying just below the surface of your conscious mind. Therapists often ask patients to write out a solution to their problem as if they did know. And most of the time, they do know. This technique can be applied outside of the therapeutic session. One of my favorite examples of using the what if I did know involves my cousin Madeline. So Madeline had moved to Calaveras County for a fresh start after a divorce. And she bought a home in Valley Springs and began working in the county clerk's office. After a few years, she found herself pinched financially, primarily due to the housing market. And one day, Maddie told me that she needed to do some thinking and planned to spend several hours that evening considering her options. So this was a... Whose contact info are you looking for? Sorry, Siri. So this was an example of somebody that needed to know what to do. What if I do know? What if I just sit down and do some thinking? Madeline is vivacious and funny and attractive. She has an active social life, and it is no wonder that she actually schedules time to do some thinking. And this was her way to consider, what if I do know? Her thinking led to her selling her home and buying a double wide in an adult mobile home park where she had some friends already living. And the park was across the street from the county clerk's office and she could walk to work. Now that was a great solution. A couple more years passed and Maddie did some thinking about her, re her retirement. She would have preferred a more comfortable retirement income. And this time, her thinking led her to run for the position of county clerk. She had worked in the office there for several years, and she was elected. And when her first and only term was over, she retired again, much better prepared to enjoy her golden years. What if you did know? What if you just had to think? Or write it out. 
Now, I, I consider myself to be an old hippie and, and a rebel. And I tend to think that our public school system stresses conformity over independent thought. And this schooling, along with negative messages received from parents and the media, can result in mental passivity, mental passivity, using the what if I did know allows us to tap into our natural creativity and our inner genius. So practice it, practice it several times during the week. Ask yourself when you need to solve a problem, well, what if I did know? And then allow the ideas to flow and select the best ones. And if you're like Madeline, schedule some time for some thinking. Tuesday night, I'm gonna do me some thinking. Some of our best spiritual teachers urge us to examine our assumptions, our based beliefs, our paradigms, considering how powerful mind action is. There are few things we can do that will improve our lives and our world so quickly and so effectively. And thus ends our featurette. God bless you all. There we are. We're going to take a moment to bless our prayer requests now. Now we give you the information on the screen to contact Silent Unity or leave a request for a prayer request on our email. Also in person, you could leave one in the prayer box in the lobby. And we take all those who've requested prayer and and all those that they've requested prayer for into our hearts at this time. And we affirm that they are God's beloved, that they have an abundance of everything they need in life.
to be healthy and happy and wise and to follow their divine guidance. And so it is. Amen. Now I want to share with you a letter that we received from Silent Unity this week. We talk about Silent Unity a lot and how all of the prayer requests, even the ones you give us on a Sunday morning at, in person, end up in the prayer vigil chapel there at Unity Village. And they write a thank you letter to us. They say, dear friends in Unity, what a gift you are to the Unity movement and to our world. As you reach out soul to soul to the members of your community, you are ambassadors of love, peace, and joy. Through soul enriching activities, services, and classes, you touch the hearts of others and help them grow spiritually. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and those you serve each day. The gift you shared enables us to reach out and serve more people. Bless you and thank you for your $25 offering to Silent Unity. We appreciate your loving support. Because all that you do radiates love. You bless everyone around you. We appreciate you and we know that even greater blessings of love, peace, and joy are yours now through the power of God within you. We have sent um, Silent Unity that monthly ties for years and years. We love their support and we love to support them. And so now we prepare for a time of meditation. This is called the Shining Heart Meditation. And I invite you to become comfortable, to take a couple deep breaths. And as we relax and allow this time of meditation to lead us into that upper room in consciousness, let us rest in the knowing that we are part of an unbroken chain of worship and awakening. We awaken to the truth that sets us free, that we are the firstborn of the Almighty that we create with the power of our minds and that we have within us all that we need to lead meaningful and successful lives. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came to demonstrate to humankind that we are all the begotten sons and daughters of the Most High. He taught that we are one with the Creator and with the Christ. And thus began the greatest story ever told. The story of each of us as we step into our power and our truth. As above, so below. And also in the middle. For this were we born. We are the reconcilers of heaven and earth. In our hearts meet matter and spirit, spinning forth galaxies and an infinite number of life forms. If only we allow it. If only we loose our grip on the must do's and the must haves of life. Then we can rest like the lilies of the field secure in the knowing that all has been provided. We were created to shine like a thousand suns. When the power of our hearts is set free, then we shall know that love truly does conquer all. We follow the guidance of the Christ within, realizing how natural it is to do so. For we cannot differ from the cloth from which we were sewn. 
We allow this eternal truth to rise and comfort us, strengthen us, and gladden our beings as we rest for a while in this silence. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask only to see, to trust, to believe. As we rely more and more on the enlivening spirit of truth, our lives become a living testament to the power and the glory forever and ever. And so it is. Ah. From the beginning, as this will always be, all one together forever, eternally. One from the beginning, as this will always be, all one together forever, eternally. One, one. Inside the light, brilliant.
outstanding. Thank you so much. Now, something completely different. This is today's talk entitled Holy Human and Holy Divine. And I'm going to leave the, the title slide up just for a little while and I'll probably then take it down so you don't have to look at it the whole time. This is a continuation of our series on unity's basic principles. And we are focusing on the second principle, which is the divinity of human beings. In order to understand this, we need to remind you that the first principle is that God is all. And we'll be discussing Jesus and the Christ and the idea of separation and, and dualism. So we begin with the story of my dog, Bailey, and his separation anxiety. Bailey had a rough time before I adopted him. And at first, he would get upset when I left the house. And these are the things that I told him when he got upset. Bailey, even when you don't know where I am, I know where you are. Even when you forgot that mommy was just going to the store, mommy never forgot that you were safe at home. Even when you believe that you have been abandoned, I know that you are safe. You have shelter and food and that you and I are never truly separated. The appearance of separation exists only in your fear, only in your forgetting. And we too, we humans, are suffering from separation anxiety. And it exists only in our fear and only in our forgetting. We read from the opening of the Gospel of John. And the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. This is considered one of the creation stories in, in the gospels. And it is a description of the Christ. The Christ is the aspect of the divine from which the world was birthed. The Christ is the light of the world, the light which caused all beings and all things to spring forth into being. The Christ abides within each of us as we abide within it. This is unity's second principle. Now, Jesus was the aspect of the divine that was born into human form to serve as our way shower and our elder brother. Through the years since the beginning of all things, we used our free will to create the illusion of separation and we became the separated ones. That's actually one of the names that other beings have for us, the separated ones. We forgot that in which we abide and that which abides in us. The world indeed became a very scary place. And we began to feel that we had been abandoned. So look at your own life, look into your own heart. Remember the things you worry about 
when you awaken at 3 a.m. and cannot get back to sleep. We have forgotten where God is, that God has never forgotten where we are. And despite the scariness of the illusion that we have created, God knows that we are safe, that we have shelter and food, and that we have never truly been separate from God's love. I was not raised in a church going family. I was not taught that there is a higher purpose to my existence. I did not know that my every decision, my every thought had import and impact upon the world. I did not know how to weigh the things that happened in my life or how to decide the best way to respond to them. And then I met a man named Bill. This was my 38th year in the summer when I was hitting the bottom of my drinking habit. And I met him in a bar. And Bill had seven children. He was a general contractor. And he prayed before every meal. He would take me out to a restaurant. And, and before we began eating, it might just be a pause or a nod or a glance. But it was always the acknowledgement of God and the source. He made his to-do list each morning, and he owned his own company, and it was a heck of a to-do list, not to mention taking care of the seven kids. And he turned it over to God every day. He told me he did this. His youngest was living with him, Joseph. And I, I happened to be at their apartment one day when Joseph wanted to skip a class at church uh, and go to some social engagement, and Bill would not let him do it. He said, your spiritual life is the most important. I was so amazed. Bill referred me to a drug and alcohol specialist who sent me to treatment. And he continued to show kindness to me. He came in for counseling when I was in treatment. And that holiday season, he, he made sure that I knew things to do other than go to the bar about the sober dances that the local AA clubs had. And he gave me tickets to go see the Messiah on a night that could have been particularly slippery otherwise. Bill's way of living seemed so strange to me. And yet he was struggling with the same issues that so many of us struggle with. He was overweight. He drank too much. He was going through this nasty divorce. And yet his relationship with God was the warp upon which he wove the fabric of his life. We are none, none of us perfect. I have a friend who tells the story of spending the night in the drunk tank at the local police station. And he noticed a well-dressed conservative looking woman in the next cell and wondered why she'd been arrested. And later he saw a policeman let her out and escort her away. And as he did, my friend heard the officer say, lady, I noticed the what would Jesus do license plate holder on your car and the bumper sticker that said, follow me to Sunday school and the chrome plated Christian fish emblem stuck on the trunk. So when you started honking and cussing at the driver in front of you and then gave him the finger, was it any wonder that I just assumed you had stolen the car? We are none of us perfect. How did Jesus tell us how to live so that we remember what we are? so that our reactions are congruent with the truth of us. He told us to turn the other cheek, to share with the needy, to trust God for our supply, to have compassion for those who suffer. 
There are divine principles at work in every aspect of creation. Principles like, as you sow, so shall you reap, which means, as you give, so shall you receive. Other principles, which we frequently discuss, like forgiveness and healing and the law of mind action. These principles are eternal and changeless. You can count on them to always be true. When I lived in Missouri, there was a little girl next door named Raven, and um, she was the light of my life. And she would come over and sometimes we would finger paint. And I would tell her, Raven, if you keep on adding all those colors, it's going to be gray when you get done. And she would never listen. And, and I'd be doing my little painting and, and she'd be adding this color and this color and this color. And then it would turn out to be muddy gray and she'd throw it away because it was ugly. This was true every time. Like our principles are true every time. You can count on them. You can count on the finger paints turning gray and you can count on our principles being true. If we do not like the way our lives look, remember that divine principles work every time and it is up to us to apply them. So as we get close to closing, I want to read part of an ode called Intimations of Immortality by William Wordsworth. And this explains our second principle. Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life's star, hath had elsewhere its setting and cometh from afar not in entire forgetfulness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home. And the most important thing to remember is that you are essential to the wholeness of creation, that your decisions and reactions reflect your awareness that you abide in God and God abides in you. Your values are important. And finally, in the dark night of your soul, when you can't remember where to find God, know that God has always known where to find you. And thus ends the lesson.
sacred So before you mute yourselves, I just wanted to confirm that these last two solos were your own creations. Yes. And are they available, like to download from the website? Yes, heartdream.com. They're so beautiful. Thank you for sharing them with us. Thank you. It's time for us to bless our love offering in so many ways. We thank you. We thank you and we appreciate you. On the slide is several ways that you can make your gift. You can um, click buttons that you see like this one in the newsletter or on our website. You can mail a check, or if you're with us in an in-person service, we actually do an old-timey love offering and have a bag. So let us recite this affirmation together, and we'll, we'll recite it two times. Ready? God is my source and nourishes me in every good and perfect way. God is my source and nourishes me in every good and perfect way. Now, before we sing our blessing song, I wanted to share one more card we got. I want to see if you can see the picture on this. <laughs> there. Can you see it? Looks like a white dog. All right. So this is Phoebe. And Phoebe belongs to Frank and Chris Krause, who have been administrators for the West Central region for many years. And Phoebe's well known. She attends every conference. She's just a little lover girl. And what I want you to know is that I had already um, finished the talk about Bailey and his separation anxiety when this came in the mail. This um, Scout's Honor. And this is what it says. Dear Carla, Daily Word said, I am enfolded in divine love and peace. Phoebe sure seems peaceful and tuned into divine love. She knows she will never be abandoned or forsaken and will always be loved. It must have been the theme. It must have been in the ethers. What about us? Do we know in our hearts that spirit will never abandon or forsake us? We just need to recognize how many ways we are cared for and be grateful. Thank you for your gift of $25 from Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights to the West Central Region. May you and your congregation always feel enfolded in divine love and care with abundant blessings from the Regional Board of Trustees. So this is also a monthly tithe that we um, send out. And there is a third one, which is to Unity World Ministries, Worldwide Ministries, and it's for $50 a month. These are important organizations and they are part of 
the organization that we belong to, and we are glad that we can support them. And so now we're going to invite Heart Dream to lead us in our blessing song. Thank you, Heart Dream. So we have some announcements today. Uh, the first one on the list is that the Tuesday class is continuing. It's an eight week class and I think they've only met twice now, Lisa. And so there are plenty of weeks left and you're welcome to drop in. If you didn't uh, sign up for the complete series, just do register on our website. This is finding your way through life's transitions. It's at 630 on Zoom every Tuesday. Let me tell you, this is something Unity does good. We know that people often come to us when they are in times of change, a divorce, a new job, they moved, a loss, an illness. And this class will help you go through any of these. So we thank Lisa for her dedication and her effort in being our licensed teacher. I added a couple of meetings to these announcements just because I wanted to let y'all know there's things that go on that you know we don't make a big deal out of, but it's things that a lot of us show up for and are actually part of our work. This Thursday, we're having a monthly board meeting on Zoom at 4.30. And then next Sunday, which is the 27th, we will be meeting back at the Sylvan Community Center in person. After the Sunday service, we're going to have a prayer circle. We initiated this, I think, two months ago. It's something we, we did before the pandemic and we'll be doing regularly now. And then after the prayer circle, we're having the monthly prayer chaplains meeting right there at the community center. It's another one that little worker bees attend. I wanted to remind you that we'll be collecting money for days for girls through the end of September. And there is a place on our website in which you can make your donation and we encourage you to do so. And when that is done, when that quarter has ended, because it was a quarterly outreach, we'll send them one check with, with all of the donations added on it. And then like always, we invite you to stay and chat after the Zoom session is done, when we end the recording and the Facebook live stream and catch up on what's happening in everybody's lives. So now we're gonna invite Heart dream to lead us in the peace song.
together we share our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.